this is where you can highlight the community and you can catch those people that are actually looking, that are actually perspective resonance. And it's really helping kind of weed out the people that are like, oh no, this is not for me right now, or I'm not going to need this, as opposed to the ones that are like, hey, I really like what this, this community is offering and I want to dive into this because this is really cool and I'm seeing it. And you catch their attention while they're already like locked in. Hey y'all, this is Costa. And today I'm here with my guest, Rachel Hill, podcast host and creative director for Senior Living Foresight, providing new perspectives on senior living practices to improve culture, reduce turnover and increase occupancy. Today we're talking about senior living in the social media era. Rachel, welcome to the show. It's an honor to interview another podcast host working in the senior care space. Would you start by telling us a bit about Senior Living Foresight, Foresight Radio, and how you started working in the industry? Absolutely. Because, well, first of all, thank you for having me. This is awesome. I am amped up. I'm, I'm thrilled. I've only had a cup and a half of coffee. So, like, you're getting a lot from me right now. I'm very, I'm very excited to be here. So first of all, thank you. Um, and yeah, let me tell you a little bit about Foresight. So really, really cool company. Um, I, I, I say that it is, you know, all things media. So written, we do Foresight Radio, which is my podcast. Thank you for sharing. Um, I've had some really, really great guests. So quick little plug for that. Y'all go check it out after you listen to Costas, please. Um, but the company was started by Steve Moran, and he was actually a former owner-operator and, you know, started taking to the, the interwebs back in 2008. And, you know, he was like, hey, here's what I did that worked. Here's what I did that didn't work. And I think why he was so successful is I think people tend to not want to be vulnerable, right? Or talk about their failings, especially in this space where you're, you're caring for people, this human to human connection, right? But again, the person on the other side is human and they're flawed. They're going to make mistakes and you're not out to hurt anybody. So you want to make the space better. And that's what I love about, you know, your podcast and what you're doing here. So Fast forward, um, you know, about 12 years now, the company's been in existence and, you know, he's built up this incredible following. I know we're going to be talking about social media, but he's got almost 30,000 connections on LinkedIn and is almost this like micro influencer. But I don't like that icky term because there's some substance there. So we we partner with, you know, the best of the best vendors in the space. And we talk about what they're doing. But then we also have non sponsored content and very much same kind of thing for uh, for the podcast. So that's that's a little bit about foresight. And Rachel, how did you find your way to foresight and, you know, in the long term care space as a whole? Oh my gosh, so this is <laughs> the most like interesting windy <laughs> path there. Can't but wait. I know <laughs> So to back up a little bit, like I was telling you a little bit off air, but um my mom was actually a nurse in, in skilled nursing for mm -hmm. you know twenty plus years and you know she she's no longer with us but this guiding moral force for me where mm -hmm. I saw how much she dove into this career and that that never left me and I, I spent a lot of time as you know a teenager you know visiting her at work and sitting with the residents and it it really changed my life and I still feel so privileged I got to have those conversations um, with them so I am in the creative space but let's fast forward how I got to, to foresight so over the pandemic, like so many of us, I, I mean, I, I felt lost, right? We're like, what is right. happening? What's going on? We're all trying to make the best of this very bizarre situation that we're That's in. That's a good word to describe it. Bizarre sounds about right. I was going to say chaotic, but I think bizarre is even more. Yes. Yeah. It, it was, you know, and honestly, throughout that whole entire period, the world was so, was just changing so rapidly uh, and none of us were prepared for, I mean, the, the new life. I mean, it's always like, it's, it's kind of like nine 11. It's either before nine 11 or after nine 11. And the same thing with the pandemic It's either before the pandemic or after. like 2019 feels like, you know, 1989. 
and 2022 or 23 after the pandemic has officially, you know, sunset. Yes. Um, it feels like, you know, 2003 something like that so a hundred percent right it was and and I think to sort of calm whatever was like going on inside of me I wanted to kind of go back to my creative roots so I I went to the University of Pittsburgh for writing and film and of course my parents are like what what are you gonna do with that Um, because my mom was a nurse my my dad actually served in the military for uh, about 19 years um got up to a staff sergeant so these really you know hard-working blue-collar jobs and they're like so you want to write film reviews for a <laughs> newspaper? You want to be the female Eper and Roper, Rachel? I was nice. like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do want to do that. <laughs> like, so with their blessing, um, you know, I that was my career path. And yeah. I've always loved the art. So during the pandemic, I picked up a camera again and started filming and I actually made a a demo reel of just different footage around the city and talking basically the the narrative of this short little video is coming out of the darkness and dealing with kind of the things of the pandemic very short Mm -hmm. someone hiring for Steve actually saw it so they were originally just looking for a social media person kind of the the basically like hey can you run all of our feeds because we want to be everywhere do all the things and we can of course talk about is that a good idea or not? Um, <laughs> I have thoughts. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. And then, um, you know, I I talked to Steve about my mom, and, and I feel so grateful. Yeah. That really resonated with him. He's like, well, here's someone, I think, um, you know, not to speak for him, but I think he was like, well, here's someone that's creative, but also has some some roots, is grounded in, in this space that I'm trying to make better. Yeah. Um, And then it just continued to grow. So from, you know, just scheduling out posts and sort of these, uh, you know, run of the day tasks that you do as a social media coordinator, it grew to, you know, uh, editing videos for our partners now, these video interviews. It went to, you know, I go to Argentum every year and make these cool little demo reels and get to have these really cool conversations. I took over our podcast about a year ago now. um, And that's sort of how how things escalated. So it's interesting. You've been able to merge both modalities. So the seniors, the background that you have in, in your, with your mom being a nurse yeah. and also obviously your creative side, you've been able to bring it together into this really amazing product. So I think that's awesome. I really appreciate that. I think it's, it, it's tough and I would encourage anyone, you know, looking to, if, you know, hire in this space, you know, I, I hope to be that example of yeah. some outside the box thinking of who you're hiring, why you're hiring them, and right. and you know what are your goals for your your community, your company, your residents, um, yes, and that absolutely. kind of engagement. And you know, I I hope in the next you know five to ten years, especially with Gen Z, you know, coming up here in this space, mm-hmm. hopefully that you know, we can kind of do that outside the box thinking for, for hiring. So I, I'd love to see it. Yeah. Let's get into it. Yes. Today we're talking about two things that people probably don't associate together that often, social media and senior living. Mm -hmm. What role does social media play in the marketing and community building of senior living today? Oh my gosh. I, I love this question. And I, I kind of want to break it down this way, right? Because it's like you were, you said so beautifully, there's sort of this like time before COVID and time after, right? Sure. And not as dramatic or, or life changing, but I think it's really applicable to marketing, right? Where it's mm-hmm. sort of you have this old guard where it's like, hey, let's get everything in print and yes. on a billboard and all these yeah. things because that was the time, right? Like, mm-hmm. So let's fast forward. How, do you want a community engagement? Think about your audience. Think about who's who's looking at your community. And typically, it's going to be people our age. Cost I, you know, ideally yeah. is is your target audience. Okay, so where where do millennials waste <laughs> the majority of their time? <laughs> it's on sure. social media. However, you can spin that into something you know, productive where if, you know, their mom or dad needs 
your their you know your help your community and they're yeah. looking for them well that's exactly where social media plays plays this role and it's sort of getting out of your comfort zone a little bit right. because it's it's not easy right it's not easy um well and yeah. and i think i think in a lot of ways <laughs> Right now, when people advertise like an assisted living facility, for example, or a nursing home, a lot of times they do look at, you know, billboards. They look at some of the traditional ways of marketing um, their facilities or their services. But I I think what's interesting is while you're while you're looking through social media and you're looking at specific areas, specific facilities, specific services, you can make it a lot more personable. And you can you can show more of the environment. Um, it's a lot more detailed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, a billboard can offer two to three to four pictures, right? Social media posts can offer 15 to 20 pictures, almost like a like a real like a uh, listing on Zillow or Realtor dot com, you know, and so. I think you can really explain what services you're providing and also set people's expectations so that they're not uh, confused about the services that you offer. Because you know in our industry, in the long-term care space, the name may be home caregivers, but we also build wheelchair ramps. You know, And nobody would obviously know that because our industry is so compartmentalized. I mean, you you said it beautifully, and I, I love how you said explain the services you offer. And mm-hmm. I almost look at it like I would I would piggyback off of that saying show you're you're yes. visibly showing right. Like going back to my writing days in college, it's mm-hmm. like no no no. Like you don't need all that exposition because mm-hmm. that's not what's going to get people right. And especially you have about like that much time, like a nanosecond to catch someone's attention as they are looking at your space. And I, and I think so much of it, like I've always believed in storytelling because I love, I love movies. I love the arts and I love that storytelling aspect and how it can bring you in. But, you know, I think working for Stephen for Foresight has really, really helped me hone that even more. And that understanding of if you want to highlight like you said what you're offering or show that this is somewhere you're providing somewhere where this is going to be someone's home like you have to tell a story let's how about a video how about a short video of one of your residents you know that's open and willing to talk about their experience or showing a quick day in the life you know taking that time out it can help you make huge leaps in in your marketing because we know it's a time it's like what are the two issues right it's retention for your staff Mm-hmm. And then recruiting. So it's not yeah. only highlighting and engaging your 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 residents, but it's also a recruiting tool, again, for Absolutely. millennials and Gen Z. So, yeah. So I think that there are still so many misconceptions about who and how we use social media that cuts out our senior population and doesn't really give them the credit that they deserve. So in your opinion... How can seniors use social media to find better care options or even a new place to live? Oh, my gosh. I love this even more because this is this is over my past two years with Foresight. This is another way I've really grown. Right. So, again, like I said, I run all of our social accounts and believe it or not, a lot of older adults are actually on Instagram and they're really enjoying it. So to get, let me give a little context, right? So likely, again, they have grandkids that are Gen Z or millennial children, sure. right? And they're mm-hmm. like, hey, mom or dad, get on this thing because it's now pretty much, I mean, yes, there will be older adults on Facebook. Let me not uh, leave that out of the equation, <laughs> right? right? But right. it's this new shift where it's like, hey, you know, if you want to keep up with Johnny and Susie and all the yeah. activities and all the things they're doing and you want to see what's going on with our family, well, I'm going to be posting pictures on my Instagram account. Right. So what role does marketing play on this? Well, it's there's the algorithm this this beautiful thing called the algorithm right and as they are on there older adults you know checking in with their family they're gonna see ads based on other things that they're kind of scrolling through that are on their feeds right and this is where you can highlight the community and you can catch those people that are actually 
looking that are actually perspective resonance and it's really yeah. helping kind of weed out the people that are like oh no this is not for me right now or i'm not right. going to do this as opposed to the ones that are like hey i really like what this this community is offering and i want to dive into this because this is really cool and i'm seeing it and you catch their attention while they're already like locked in so i think i think instagram is a great space for that and they're on there. I mean, there's older adult influencers. This is this woman. Sure. I, I, I'm blanking on the first part of her handle, but it's something Babs, and she's hilarious. She does all these little like cleaning and cooking hacks around your house, and mm -hmm. it's like no, they're they're there and they're living and owning on that 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 space. So well, and it's free. You know, it doesn't cost any money to to consume this content. And yeah. I think that's extremely important. There's, you know, we've talked to a lot of people who one of the biggest tenants that we pull out of each conversation is that it's so important to stay connected to your community and using platforms like Instagram and Facebook allow you to access those groups of people that, you know, and, and even to make it a little bit more technical and take it a step further that may even share some a, a similar disability that you share. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, like, for example, if you have, um, you know, diabetes, you can discuss the problems and some of the solutions that come with having that type of diagnosis, Absolutely. suffering from that type of illness. And so social media is where you can you can answer a lot of the questions uh, that that come up. So absolutely. But, and in the same in the same vein, I want to kind of talk about how these facilities or these service providers um, can use social media to, well, honestly, to improve resident engagement and family communication. Do you think that that is a major factor in making sure that families get their questions and concerns answered. And if they can't do it face to face because they may be, say, for example, in a different state, um, but they want to have that level of engagement that they can do it using social media. One hundred percent. And I, I couldn't agree with you more. I love I love this so much because think about it right like you said these these families are states apart right and maybe they only get holiday visits right so sure. how cool would it be to go through you know well there's a big activity going on yeah and you know you get like a quick 15 30 second clip and that family's following your your community yep and they see their mom or dad on there have been mm -hmm. the time of their life, whatever it is that they're doing, whatever that activity yes. is. Are they gardening? Are they singing? Are they? And think about the amount of anxiety that that reduces on the family because yes. there may be, I mean, we talk about this a lot, right? There's, there's some, maybe some guilt that they're not being the home, right. uh, take, taking care of their family member at home, right? And that's mm -hmm. a huge responsibility. There shouldn't be guilt around that just to be, very, very clear. Um, so I, I, I think one, it, it alleviates that. And then two, it's like your residents get to, to actually be a part and mold and shape your marketing. And isn't that how it should be? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like face, even Facebook Live, you know, like those types of live videos of, of certain events that are going on where people can tune in and see. Um, and I'll be honest, I think that that, that that specific component will alleviate a lot of the isolation that people have, especially if there's two-way communication. Mm -hmm. So, And then another aspect that I think is rather interesting in terms of how facilities can use this is when you're not able to explain to people specifically family members, mm -hmm. how you overcome some of the challenges that, that, that come up with, you know, long-term care, running a, a long-term care facility. But you can point to interactions on social media to show kind of the thread of how you handled a person's concern. It gives people, like you said earlier, a reduction in their anxiety because they know like, okay, well, this facility's encountered this. This is how this administrator handled it. I can see that, you know, they're committed to their quality of care. Those things matter. hundred percent. I mean, and the, mm -hmm. this is, again, now, the, this too, I think, can be a great resource for, for recruiting too, right? Where yeah. 
you're it's sort of that two birds one stone situation yes. where it's like okay you're showing how you handle a problem so the family can see that but then you're also showing the day in the life of this position which i think one of the biggest issues our industry has is we are not opening up the the eyes to gen right. z so that we can build a foundation and how cool would it be to post a quick day in the life you're like i get it you're you're busy but 15 seconds 20 seconds sure. of your day what you do and that catches the eye of you know someone about to leave high school yeah. and enter college and they're like oh this is interesting i didn't know i could do something like this or <laughs> oh look at how they solve that or look at the area that they're taking part in and and this is really really cool and something i want to be a part of so i think <laughs> I think it's a two birds, one, one stone situation with that. For sure. For communities that are not currently using social media, mm -hmm. what are some actionable steps that they can take to start building their online presence? Oh, I love this question. Um, you know, I think so often, you know, when I talk to my, my, my peers that are, that are running these accounts and doing this, you know, everybody wants to know the secret sauce, right? And how do you go viral? How do you do this? Right. That's always mm -hmm. every, it's like, it's, there's no middle ground. It's either we're not going to do it or we want to go viral. And I'm right. Like, what about, what about the in between? <laughs> because that does exist. Um, it just takes so long. Right. <laughs> right. And, and you make, that's, this is the point I was going to make. And you, you said it, uh, and it makes me laugh because it, it's just about consistency, right? It's about showing up two to three times a week and posting on a feed, deciding where you want to be. And you can always expand that journey. Like, I get it. Everybody wants to be on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn. Why are we on here? What are we doing here? Should we do YouTube shorts? Should we post full-length videos on YouTube? What do we do? And, and it just, like, <laughs> it builds and builds and builds, right? So what I recommend is, you know, first and foremost, you're – you're here to take care of your residents and run run your community, right? So that that that's your first priority. But what you can do is there's a lot of great scheduling apps. Um, I use Hootsuite, um, but you can of course you can post natively. But what's great about these scheduling apps though is it does sort of it's like a set it and forget it. Um, if mm -hmm. if you know your listeners aren't familiar with that, so it's basically you know take Monday. Schedule out your post for the week. It could be a photo. Now Hootsuite's doing video clips, which is a great uh, update to that. Go ahead, set up your, your calendar for the week. Move on about your day and caring for your residents like it needs to be. And start simple. I mean, it, it's, it, it doesn't have to be these, these grand productions. It's going and taking some photos with your, your phone of, of your residents engaging. And maybe mm -hmm. a short little video clip. And just get those scheduled out for the week. And then do it again, though, and do it yeah, again, correct. and do it again, and and take one of those days to set out about you know fifteen minutes of of each week to go through and respond to comments. Um, again, that's where the algorithm comes into play. If people are like, "Oh, I love that you know your residents are doing this," or "I do this at my community," or "Oh, wow, like I'm looking for a community and I love what you right back." Because that's yes. huge. Don't there's yeah. this funny saying, don't post and ghost, right? Like ghosting <laughs> in the dating world. So don't post on social media and then just think like it'll handle itself. You still have to do a little bit of work there. But right. um, there's ways to sort of make that more manageable. As a creative director, how do you approach creating content for a topic as sensitive as senior living? And how do you balance providing insight while also being respectful and considerate? Oh, man, it's it's a tricky balance, right? Because a lot mm -hmm. of the, the content that I personally consume can tend to be like a little edgy well, in your in your sure. face. And, you know, I think I'm I'm lucky that my my boss isn't afraid to have those difficult conversations in, in a respectful way. Um, sure. So I think to an extent I approach it like I would like I'm talking to anybody else. Right. Like getting out of my bias and talking to older adults or people in the space like how I would want to receive that that information so for me it's like I want to be lighthearted, fun maybe a little cheeky but not to the point where I'm really like stirring up something that's not not right and and pushing yeah. buttons just to 
push it. That's 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 not my goal. And yeah, you'll get engagement that way, but that's not the way to, to not do it. Not good engagement. Ex- not the right kind of engagement. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I I want to storytell. I want to do it in a fast-paced way. And in that respect, I'm okay making everyone around us adapt because that's how you make real change. So it's yeah. like if you're not used to consuming this kind of content where it's fast paced, it's got the captions, I've got some music, I'm doing something fun. It's like, well, your brain, your, you know, your neurons are going to have to start working in a different way here and because sure. we're offering value and you're going to miss out if you can't adapt to sort of that, that change. So that I kind of get rooted in that and I'm not afraid to, to be entrenched in that. Let's talk about that adaptation Mm. with the ever changing landscape of digital media. What do you envision for the future of social media in the senior care space? Mm. Oh, my gosh. I mean, again, I think it's going to continue to play a heavier and heavier role in in marketing. I mean, that's that that's how this is going to get get done. It just I think it's the future. Um, do you think yeah. do you think that there's going to be if we look at it from the perspective of individuals who interact with social media that aren't on the on the industry side but that are just looking for services and looking for companionship, do you think that situations like the metaverse may end up coming to fruition to where seniors can exist obviously in reality, but at the same time, they can also exist maybe in virtual reality and find companionship in in that capacity. Yeah, no, uh, uh, a hundred percent. And real quick before I speak that, because I was also going to talk about, because it's funny you said, I was going to talk about how AI too is is Uh going to continue to play a bigger role in social media marketing. I mean, I'm looking into some things that basically auto-generate and create captions for me for my my videos and they do it in a really cool way and it's so succinct and quick where it's like this this is an incredible tool so that's one of the things too using ai to make your social media marketing more manageable um Mm -hmm. and then quickly they're they're not a foresight partner but it's a really cool company um i don't know if you've heard them but they're called rendeavor and okay they are uh in in that sort of vr space and one of the cool things they can do is you know they can create these really tailored experiences so let's say that you know uh, a resident is taking part in this they have had someone that has gone and filmed at a location where this resident maybe got married at oh wow and they can put on this headset and relive that so no a hundred percent and I just wanted to touch on quickly because you, you, you keep bringing it up and I think it's awesome is that, you know, online community can be a genuine and real community um, in addition to these um, real, you know, IRL uh, sure. connections that we have. Right. And I think that's something that's often missed and a perspective that needs to be changed because, yes, social media can be really toxic, but I think it's also you've got to curate your feed right. to get rid right. of that nonsense because there's a lot of good. Right. And, and I think in this fast paced world, that's not planning on slowing down anytime soon. You know, this is, and as we grow as an, with an aging population, more and more people are, um, are being at risk of, of feeling isolated. I think that this is a huge tool. I don't think it's the only tool, but I'd say it's probably going to be used more times than not to try to continue um, the connection, the human connection, whether it's on a platform like Facebook or it's in a virtual reality world like like Meta, Mm -hmm. um, you know, or if it's just having this type of inclusion where two people are talking about the long-term care space that somebody is participating in, you know, somebody either receives services from or has a family member that does. It's... I think we're all a part of, of building that community. So, A hundred percent. I agree. We always like to end the show with a call to action. What is your advice to listeners that would like to start utilizing social media as a way to build community and enrich their life as they age? Ooh, oh, man. I, I love this. I mean, again, I think it... It goes back to what I I was saying, right? It's like, it's the basics. It's, it's consistency. I would say my, my takeaways would be find your, yourself a scheduling tool, 
if you can't hire someone, let's, you know, I know the, the economy's weird, it's doing weird things, but if you're fortunate enough and have a small budget, please, or get an intern, treat them right, but get an intern, and you're, if you're trying to open up eyes to, to this space, have a social media intern, so let, let, let's maybe start there, but if you can or don't have a budget... Get, get a scheduling tool like Hootsuite, but there's other ones that you can use. Um, and, 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 and be be consistent, you know. Get your residents involved, uh, the ones that are, are open to it, and let, let them tell your story. And you don't have to. 